Have you ever wondered how aluminum foil is made? It's a question that might not cross your mind as you're wrapping up leftovers, lining a baking sheet, or even crafting a makeshift antenna. Aluminum foil, a product so common, so versatile, and yet so often overlooked. This shiny silver material is literally at our fingertips, used in our kitchens, our grills, and even our art projects. It's a staple in households around the world, a silent ally that aids in cooking and preservation. Aluminum foil has even found its way to outer space used in the insulation of spacecraft. Yet despite its ubiquitous presence, the journey of aluminum foil from factory to kitchen drawer remains a mystery to many. It's a fascinating process, a testament to human ingenuity and the power of transformation. So let's embark on this journey together, exploring the intricate steps that shape this humble material into the role we all know and use. But have you ever stopped to think about how this versatile material comes to be? It all starts with a naturally occurring mineral called bauxite. This reddish-brown clay-like substance is laced with a treasure trove of aluminum. In fact, it's the world's primary source of this versatile metal. It's found in abundance across the globe, with major deposits in regions like West Africa, Australia, and South America. Isn't it fascinating that something as mundane as aluminum foil begins its journey in such far-flung corners of the world? Bauxite isn't ready to be made into aluminum foil just yet. It's like a rough diamond that needs a little polish before it truly shines. This is where the process of mining comes in. Picture giant earth movers, their monstrous jaws biting into the earth, scooping up tons of bauxite. It's a colossal operation, but it's just the start. Once the bauxite is extracted, it's sent to a processing plant. Here, it undergoes a transformation, almost like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. The bauxite is washed and crushed, reducing it to a crumbly mess. It's then mixed with caustic soda and heated under pressure in what's known as the Bayer process. This separates the alumina, or aluminum oxide, from the bauxite. The residue, known as red mud, is discarded, leaving us with a fine white powder, alumina. Alumina might not look like much, but it's the key to unlocking aluminum's potential. It's like a gatekeeper, guarding the secret of aluminum's strength and versatility. But to reveal that secret, the alumina has to be smelted in a furnace at temperatures surpassing 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. This intense heat breaks down the alumina, releasing pure aluminum, but that's a story for another scene. For now, let's just appreciate the journey that our aluminum has taken so far. From the depths of the earth, through the rigors of mining and refining, to the white powder of alumina. It's a testament to human ingenuity, and it underscores the value of something as seemingly simple as aluminum foil. Now that we have our alumina, we are one step closer to creating our aluminum foil. From a white powder to shiny metal, how does that happen, you might wonder? Well, it's all thanks to a fascinating process known as the hall Aero process. This process, named after its inventors, American chemist Charles Hall and Frenchman Paul Hero, is the primary method used to extract aluminum from its ore, alumina. Alumina, the white powder we mentioned earlier, is not naturally occurring. It's derived from a mineral called bauxite. After going through a series of chemical reactions, we get this white powder, which is essentially aluminum oxide. But we are not interested in the oxide part, so we need to remove it to get our pure aluminum. This is where the hall hero process comes into play. The process starts with the alumina being dissolved in a substance called molten cryolite. Cryolite is a rare mineral, but don't worry, we can also create it synthetically. The purpose of the cryolite is to lower the melting point of the alumina, making it easier to work with. Once the alumina is fully dissolved, it's time to apply a powerful electric current. This is done through large carbon electrodes that are dipped into the molten solution. The electricity breaks the bond between the aluminum and oxygen atoms in the alumina. The oxygen reacts with the carbon electrodes to form carbon dioxide, which is released as a gas. The pure aluminum, now free of oxygen, settles at the bottom of the container due to its higher density. This liquid aluminum is then siphoned off and cooled, transforming it from a molten state to a solid one. And voila! We have our shiny, malleable metal ready to be rolled into aluminum foil, soda cans, or whatever else we may need. So through the magic of chemistry and electricity, we've gone from a humble bauxite rock to a white powder, and finally to the shiny, lightweight metal we all know and love. With this process, we have transformed our white powder into shiny, malleable aluminum. 
So we have our aluminum, but how do we get it so thin and flexible? Well, the answer lies in a process that's as intriguing as it is meticulous. The aluminum, once it's been made, is not quite ready to be packed into your kitchen drawer just yet. It needs to be rolled out into large sheets, and this is achieved through a remarkable process of heating and cooling, which we'll delve into right now. Imagine a slab of aluminum thicker than what you're used to seeing in your kitchen. It's taken through a series of rollers under immense pressure. This pressure, combined with the heat, compresses the aluminum, making it thinner and wider. Think of it like a baker rolling out a lump of dough, except on a much larger scale and with a lot more heat involved. After this initial roll, the aluminum is now in a more malleable state, but it's still not quite thin enough to be called foil. So the process is repeated, but this time the aluminum is cooled down. This cooling process helps to harden the aluminum, making it more durable and able to hold its shape. It's then rolled again and again, each time making it thinner. This game of heat, cool, and roll is played out several times until the aluminum reaches the desired thinness. And with each roll, the aluminum sheet gets longer and longer, transforming from a thick slab into a thin, flexible sheet that can be rolled up into the familiar cylinders we're so accustomed to. And what's truly fascinating is the precision involved in this process. The rollers have to be set to the exact pressure to ensure the aluminum doesn't tear or become too thin. It's a careful balance of heat, cool, and pressure, all working in harmony to create this everyday product. And just like that, we have our thin sheets of aluminum. The process might seem simple, but it's a testament to the ingenuity of manufacturing and the incredible properties of aluminum. The next time you pull out a sheet of aluminum foil, take a moment to appreciate the journey it's been on to get to your kitchen. Now, we are almost at the finish line. After the aluminum has been rolled into the thin sheets we know and love, there are still a few steps left in the process. As with any great journey, the final steps are crucial in shaping the end product. Our thin sheets of aluminum now need to be cut into the desired width. This is done with precision blades that slice through the aluminum like a razor through butter, creating clean, even cuts. The width of these cuts can vary depending on the intended use of the foil. Some are cut wide for industrial use, while others are made narrower for household purposes. Once the sheets are cut to the right width, they don't stay flat for long. They are coiled up tightly into rolls. This isn't just any old roll though, the aluminum sheets are wound around a core to form a coil that's easy to handle and transport. This process is similar to the way you might roll up a poster or a map. Now you might think we're done at this point, but there's one more step. The aluminum foil coils need to be packaged for shipment. This is where the foil gets its final touch before it heads out into the world. The coils are wrapped in a protective packaging to shield them from any damage during transit. This ensures that when they reach their destination, be it a supermarket, a restaurant, or your very own kitchen, they are in pristine condition. So, the journey that starts in a bauxite mine ends in a neat, shiny roll of aluminum foil. It's a long process involving a lot of steps and a lot of people, but every step is essential and each one contributes to the creation of a product that we use in our daily lives. And there you have it, the journey from bauxite to the aluminum foil in your kitchen. So, to recap, the journey of making aluminum foil begins with the extraction of raw materials. Bauxite, the primary source of aluminum, is mined and then refined into alumina. This alumina is then smelted to produce pure aluminum. This aluminum is then heated and passed through large rollers to flatten it out, a process known as rolling. The aluminum is rolled multiple times, becoming thinner and thinner with each pass until it reaches the desired thinness of aluminum foil. The final steps involve further refining the foil's thickness and adding any necessary coatings to enhance its properties. The foil is then cut into the desired widths, rolled onto cardboard tubes and packaged for distribution. Next time you reach for that roll of aluminum foil, take a moment to appreciate the journey it's been on. Thanks for watching.